Welcome to part three of the Unreal Engine C++ uh, tutorial for beginners. Uh, in the last video, or the last part of the tutorial, we created this lift in Blueprints, which simply just uh, goes up when you walk on it, and then when you walk on it again, it goes back down. And that's all done in Blueprint right now, and in this part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to take it all and convert it into C++. So the first thing you're going to need to do is right click and create a new C++ class to act as the parent for our BP lift. And you want to make it of type actor. And we will call it, uh, not life, lift base. Because it's going to be the base class of our lift blueprint. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that and give it a second. Okay, so now you can see we have liftbase.h and liftbase.cpp. So if we open up our lift blueprint, we can see there's some stuff in here that we've added that we're going to want to move over to C++. Namely, these three variables, these components, and uh, some of the stuff that's in here. So the first thing we want to do is reparent this class so that it's using our newly created C++ class. So to do that, just click on class settings and then under parent class, select lift base. So now it's been reparented and if you go ahead and run it, you'll see there's really no difference. Uh, it still works. And that's because the lift base class that we created is uh, just the same as an actor class really, because we haven't actually added anything to it yet. So we'll go ahead and start doing that right now. I'm going to start off with the variables. So starting height, ending height, and life height. So if I go ahead and delete these, since we're going to be moving them, I can come over here and in the private section, we'll add those three variables. So float, um, starting height, equals zero, float ending height equals zero, and float lift height equals zero. Now, uh, if you remember from before, we said that we don't really want designers or anybody editing the blueprint to see these two variables. So because of that, we can just kind of leave them as is. We don't have to add U property to them because we're not trying to expose them to anybody. But for the life or the lift height, uh, we definitely want that to be exposed so that a designer could come in here, click on the lift and search for lift height and change it to whatever they want. So to do that, we need to give it a U property and we want it to be editable per instance. So I'm just thinking right now, um, we want it to be editable per instance so that you can edit it here, but it would probably also be good if you could edit it uh, for the default so that you could set a default panel so that, um, you know, a designer could come in here and set a default value of 200 for every lift. And if he wants to change individual ones, he can change it uh, per instance. So because we want it edit instanceable and edit uh, in the defaults, we'll say edit anywhere. And we'll also say that it's blueprint read only. So that way we can read from it in blueprints if we need to. And we'll just add it to a category called lift base, which is just the name of our class. And, okay, so let's go ahead and compile that. My CPP project. So it's not gonna quite work yet. Oh, we got an error. Oh yes, so it's saying that the uh, blueprint read only should not be used on private members, which is very true. So we're basically saying that blueprints can read this variable, but it's currently private, so it doesn't really make sense. So in order to fix that, just move it down to the protected section so that our children can get access to it. 
And then we can go ahead and recompile and we should, should resolve that issue. All right, so it looks like it compiled, but like I said, it's still not gonna work because the stuff that we were doing in begin play, um, we're not doing it anymore and we can't do it here in blueprints because we don't have access to the starting height or the ending height, but that's okay because we can do this in C++ quite easily. So we'll just come back here and in our begin play, we'll say starting height equals get actor location. And we want the Z value and the ending height equals whatever the starting height it is, starting height is plus the lift height. All right, that looks good. And then let me check back here again. So the only other thing that's not quite going to work is before we used to have starting height right here and we used to have ending height right here. But because we deleted those variables and moved them into C++, we no longer have access to them. Now there's a couple ways we could fix this. We could uh, come in here and say that these variables are also blueprint read only. And then we could have access to them and read from them. Um, but another way that might be a little bit better is to just make accessors for them. So to do that, I'll just make two access for accessors, one for the starting height and one for the ending height. So we want to make a u function float get starting height. And we can make it constant. And it's just going to return the starting height. And we'll make one more for the ending height. All right. Now, since the U function uh, macro is empty, it's not actually going to be visible. So we need to say um, whether or not it can be called from blueprints. And the way to do that is simply just saying blueprint callable. Um, but like I said in uh, the earlier tutorial, since it's just a getter and it's not actually changing anything about our class, we probably want to make it blueprint pure instead. And we want that for both of these. So now we have two accessors, two public accessors to our private variables that we can call from blueprints. And we're going to also want to add a category. It's just a good habit to get into even if you are just setting it to the defaulted one like I am. All right, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and compile. And we wait. Okay, so now if we come back in here, we should be able to say get starting height. And you can see since we made them pure functions, they're green and we don't have to drag an execution line into them, which is really nice. And get ending height. All right, so that seems pretty good. Now, the last thing I think we need to do, did we make a lift height? Yes, we did. Okay, so we made a lift height variable, but it's currently being set to zero. And we have it set to edit, edit anywhere. So we can change it in the class defaults by coming over here and saying lift height. We can set it to something. And maybe a designer says, you know what? Most lifts I want to be set to 500. And so they can set a 500 right there. But if they want to change it for a specific um, a specific one, they could come and click on it and then just type lift height. And then you'll see it's defaulted to whichever they've set it to, but then they can also change it to be whatever they want. And that only changes it for this particular one. It doesn't change it for all of them. So now this should just uh, hopefully continue to work. Looks like it does quite well. And we step back on and we go back down. So that seems pretty good. Now we've only converted over part of it. We've only converted over the variables. You see they're no longer here. They're now part of the lift base and we can only actually see the lift height because the other ones are not marked as U properties, um, which is exactly what we want because designers shouldn't even know or care about those two variables. All right, so the next thing I wanna convert over is the actual components themselves because right now these components uh, belong to the child. They belong to the blueprint. Uh, this parent class has no no, no idea that they even exist. So I'm going to come in here and uh, before I delete them, just make a quick note of the order. So we got a we got a, a root component, a default scene root component, 
we got a static mesh component and we got a box collision component and they're all inheriting or they're all uh parented to each other so the box is a parent of the static mesh and the static mesh is a parent of the uh, scene root so i'm gonna go ahead and de delete these um one thing to note you can't actually delete the default scene root because you need to at least have some component for the root at all times so we'll be able to remove that once we add some in C++. Okay, so we're going to come over to C++. Um, it's a little bit more work to add components in C++ than it is in Blueprints, which is kind of why I suggest if you're prototyping something to do it in Blueprints first to make sure you get it all the way you want it and with all the components that you need. And then once you have it, you can do it in C++, pretty much exactly like we're doing it right now. So the things that we're going to need are a scene root component, which I think is just called a scene component. And to do that, you just type class because it's a class and then you scene component and components are always going to be pointers. So you want to make it a pointer and we'll call it whatever we want. I'll just say root scene component. And we want to set that to null pointer. And we want to have another one for the static mesh. So you static mesh component. Actually, I'll just call this lift mesh because that's basically what it is. It's the mesh for the lift. And then we need one more for the box collision. And we'll call this trigger box. All right, so these are our three variables that we need um, and our three components, but as you might um, have points, or you might have uh, realized they, they're not actually going to be visible in blueprints yet because they don't have this U property macro on them. So we need to add that. So U property. And basically what we want to put in here is that we want it to be visible anywhere. And we want it to be readable in blueprints. And the category again is just our lift base and we want this for all of them but uh real quick so if i go ahead and compile this now you'll actually see again it's going to give me an error now it should be on this screen here it's going to give me an error and it's going to say uh, blueprint read only should not be used on a private member now last time we got this error it was because we had this variable in the private section and to fix it, we just moved it down to protected. Uh, you don't really want to do that for components because you want components to be private. And there's a way you can tell Unreal to kind of just deal with it, <laughs> basically. And to do that, you just say uh, meta, which allows you to specify uh, like meta specifiers, and then equals, and then open bracket, close bracket. And then in here, you can type a bunch of different uh, specifiers. And the one we want is called allow private access, and we want to set that to true. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this for all of these, because we want it for all of them. And there we go. I think that should be good. Let's just go ahead and compile to make sure I haven't made any mistakes so far. Ooh, I did make a mistake. Oh, it doesn't know what box collision is. Oh, I think it's called box component is why. Let's go ahead and compile this. Okay, now we're good. Now you'll notice that that didn't actually add any of those components to our actor. And it didn't do that because we didn't actually create them yet. So to do that, you need to do it in the constructor. And there's a handy little function called create default sub object. And it's a templated function which takes in the type that you want to create. And so the types are going to be our scene component, our static mesh component, and our root component. So we're going to have to create them one at a time. So I'm going to do the scene component first. So scene component. And then it just wants a name. So we'll say text and then the name, which is our root scene component and then this is going to return 
to us the component. So we'll just set our root scene component to that. And one more thing we need to do. So you can see currently our root component is this default scene root. I can't delete it. Um, if we want to change that, we can do that right here by saying set root component, and then we'll just give it our newly created root scene component. If you don't set the root component, it will choose one for you. I believe it chooses whichever one you create first in here, if I recall correctly. But it's good to just create your own and set it so you know uh, exactly what's happening. So this creates the root component. And then we want to create the static mesh component for the lift itself. So we'll say static mesh, or it's called lift component, I think is what we called it, or lift mesh, yeah, lift mesh equals create default sub object again, and you static mesh component, and we want to say text, and we'll call it lift mesh. And just an FYI, whatever name you pass here, I'm pretty sure is the name that shows up in this list, by the way. Okay, and if you remember from before, our lift mesh, our lift mesh was attached to our root scene component. And you can do that in C++ just by saying lift mesh setup attachment. Oh, and it's gonna say, so, okay, so we're getting an error saying the pointer to an incomplete class type is not allowed. And that's because it doesn't, uh, we haven't included the include file for static mesh component. In blueprints, you don't have to worry about this. In C++, uh, you can't use certain objects unless you have the include for them. So we need to include components, static mesh component. If you can't find the, if you don't know the include for something off the top of your head, which you probably won't for most things, all you have to do is just Google this and I'll just show you. So if you're trying to find the include for static mesh component, just go to Google, type it in, first thing up here, and then scroll down and it says include and it gives you the include. So you would just copy this. Uh, word for word, and paste it right up here. But I just know that components are in the components folder. So, so now that we have that, we can say setup attachment, and this will attach ourselves to whatever we pass. And we're going to pass the root scene component. And then the last one we need to create is the box component, which is our trigger. So, trigger box equals create default sub object you box component and we want to give it the name trigger box and again we want to attach the trigger box to oh and once again we need to include it because it doesn't know what it is so we'll say include components uh, box component and we'll say setup attachment, and we'll attach it to the lift mesh, like so. All right, now I think we should be able to see it. Now that, assuming we've done it correctly, we'll just recompile. Okay, so you can see it pretty much did exactly what we wanted. There's one little thing that I'll talk about, but you can see we have the root scene component as the root, we have the light lift mesh, and then we have the trigger box, and they're all correctly uh, inheriting from, or they're all correctly attached to each other. Now we still have this default scene root, which is just kind of chilling here, and I think this is just a bug with Unreal. Sometimes when you're making changes to the parent class, the child class doesn't really update correctly, especially with components. I'm not 100% sure why. The easiest way to fix this, I believe, is to just restart um, Unreal. And to do that, just click this little restart button up here. I know it kind of uh, is not the best thing, but you really don't have to do it that much. And I've just found it to be the easiest way to fix this problem, because it only takes a second or two to relaunch. So now if we go back and we look at our lift, uh, you can see it's gone. So yeah, if you see like mystery components over here and you're not sure why they're here, just go ahead and restart it and they'll go away. 
All right, so now we have our component set up correctly. But you'll notice if we run it, oh, well, <laughs> I guess one thing we need to do first is we need to recreate our little lift here because our static mesh doesn't even have a static mesh set for it. So we need to reset this to our cube and remake the geometry, so 0 0.1 and 2 and the trigger box will set to make it a little nicer. All right, pretty good. But like I was saying, if we go ahead and rerun this, if we step on it, you'll see nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because in the event graph, uh, we were previously checking the on component begin hit for our box but we removed the box and we placed it with our own uh, box that we made in C++. So this event's never going to get fired anymore. So we need to delete it and we can add it again for our new component, our new trigger box. So we'll just re-add it and drag it back up here. Hook that up. Hook that up. And I think that might be it. We'll try it again. And so now it works again. So this little piece that I'm standing on and the collision volume are both defined in C++. But as you've noticed, there's still a good amount of stuff that's happening in the blueprint. And this is typically the way uh, a lot of projects work out is you have some stuff in C++ and you have some stuff in blueprints. And it really just comes down to, you know, who needs access to what, uh, where is it easier to do it in, and stuff like that. Generally, if a lot of people need access to something, you're going to want to put it in C++ because, like I said in the first part of this tutorial, uh, blueprints can access C++, but C++ cannot access blueprints, at least not very easily. So if you have a lot of stuff in blueprints that people need access to, uh, you're going to have a hard time giving, it, uh, giving people access to it, especially if they're uh, in C++. But for something like just moving the lift up and down, nobody else needs to know about that, at least not uh, for our use case. So it's pretty good to actually leave it in blueprints. And if I was doing this myself for a real game, I'd probably consider just leaving it like this, um, where I have the components in C++, I have the variables in C++, but just some of the logic is left here in blueprints. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'll go ahead and continue moving stuff over to C++ so that you can see a little bit more about how that might be done if you need to do that. So the next thing I'll move over is the uh, this little section right here for detecting when we overlap with the box. So to do that, um, we can just go ahead and delete this, I guess, because we don't really need it anymore. And it's a little bit more tricky in C++ as most things tend to be. But we're going to want to come right here to our trigger box. And in the constructor, you'll say, on component begin overlap dot and then add dynamic and it won't actually show up in this list down here don't let that bother you because it's just a macro it's kind of magical how it works but you say add dynamic and it wants to know the user object which is uh, just this in this case and then a function to call now before we can give it a function, we have to actually make a function. And the function we make needs to be compatible with the on component begin overlap event. Because if you look at this event, I'm just going to go back here and define it real quick so we can look at it. If you look at it, um, it has six parameters that get passed in, like the overlapped component, the other actor, the other component, and so forth. So whatever function we pass here needs to also have those parameters. And you're probably wondering, how do you figure out exactly what those parameters are? Well, there's a little trick you can do to figure it out. If you just right click on whatever event you're on and you go to the declaration of it, you'll see a signature variable. And if you go to the declaration of that, maybe not. OK, there we go. You'll see some beautiful little crazy macros that Epic has made that define what those signatures are. So you can see you have the name of it, 
and I believe this is the invoking object. And then after that, you have the parameters. So if you look, you see you have an overlapped component, you have an other actor, you have an other component, other body index, a bool for swept from, and a sweep result. And if you look back in blueprints, those are the exact same parameters that you have here. So what you want to do is copy all of these, not including this first one, because it's just the invoking object, and copy all of these. And these are going to be our parameters for our function. So we'll just come down here and we'll make a private function because nobody else needs access to this. And it needs to be a U function. Anytime you're making a function that binds to something, it needs to be a U function. If you don't make it a U function, it will give you an error, actually a pretty good error that tells you, hey, this needs to be a U function. Uh, so it's not too hard to figure out if you mess up. And we'll just say on triggered, maybe we should say like on lift triggered or something, I don't know. And for our parameters, we'll just paste that. And since these parameters came from a macro, they were separated, the name of the parameter and the type of the parameter were separated by a comma. But we don't really want that because that's not really how parameters work. So we'll just remove basically every other comma from this. And once we do that, we will have our parameters. So now we have a function that can get called that's compatible with the on component begin overlap function. So we come back here, we can say the function we want it to call is we need the address of it. So that's what that ampersand is. It's the address of our on lift triggered event. So this is the syntax. Uh, it might look a little weird, but it's basically saying whenever this event happens, call this function from that's part of this class. Now we need to actually define this function. So I will do that. Copy this, bring it down here, scope it in, and make a body. Now, if you remember in Blueprints, um, the thing that we were doing when this function got called is that we were checking the other actor to make sure it was the third person character. And we can do that here in Blueprints. So you just say, we'll do a cast, and we want to cast it to a third person character base. And we need to include this because it doesn't know what it is. So we'll just come up to the top here and say include third person character base. And then it should update here in a second. There we go. And the thing we want to cast is the other actor. And so we're going to catch this in a third person character pointer. And we can say if this is not equal to null, then we know that it is a third person character and we can continue. So here we basically want to, you know, uh, raise slash lower the ramp, just like we were doing before. But currently that code is over here in blueprints. So the next logical step would be to simply just call this function. And again, the golden rule is that C++ does not know about blueprint functions, but blueprint functions know about C++ functions. So we can't really call this function from C++ because we don't know about it. But there is something we can do so that we can call directly into blueprints. And that's, uh, that's basically making a function and saying that it's a blueprint implementable event. And then since we've defined it in C++, we'll be able to call it from C++ and we'll be able to implement it in blueprints. So that's exactly what we want to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we're going to define our own over here. Uh, and we need to make it protected so that we can actually know about it in our child blueprint. And we need a u function. I can't. u function. And like I said, it is going to be a blueprint implementable event and category equals life base 
Now, the other thing you kind of sometimes want to specify for functions is if it's blueprint callable or not. Um, in this case, we don't really need this function to be blueprint callable because we're going to be calling it from C++, not from blueprints. So I'm not going to add that because we don't really need it. And if you don't need something, it's better to just not have it. And we are going to call it void. We'll just say, hmm, we'll call it update lift height. So this function will get called from C++ whenever we want the lift to move because we've stepped on it and it will be implemented in C++ or in blueprints. So we just need to call it real quick. Update lift height. I don't know why I wrote ramp here. Okay, update lift height. Now in order to actually override it, we need to compile first. So we will recompile. Now if we come back here and we look for our overrides, we'll have an update lift height. And we will just drag that right back up here to do what it was doing before. And now we're good. Now you can see the only thing we have in blueprints is this little timeline that raises and lowers the ramp. All right, so I had to edit out part of this video because I had to figure out uh, exactly what was happening. But I did figure it out. Um, so right after we wrote this function for on lift triggered and we call update lift height, we then came in here and we basically said override update lift height. And we hooked that up. And when I ran it, it wasn't actually going up. And I had to stop the video and figure out, or I had to edit out exactly uh, what I was doing to try to figure it out. But I eventually figured it out. And it was just something stupid with Unreal. But basically what I did to fix it, because you're probably going to run into this issue as well, is I needed to restart Unreal. And I also needed to go in here and change this back to an actor and then change it back to lift base. And I've definitely had to do this many times in the past where you go and you repair it back to actor and then you repair it back to what you actually want it set to. I don't know why you have to do that, but sometimes you just have to do that. There's really no way around it. And when you do that, it unfortunately breaks a couple things. You need to recreate your events. So recreate that event. And also, we need to like reset up our little thing here. It's actually probably a good thing that this happened during the tutorial so that I can show you the two most common ways to fix it. It kind of sucks that it happens in the first place, but it is a reality when you're working with uh, C++ and Unreal. And doing that reparent thing helps a lot, and so does restarting Unreal. All right, and then also make sure that you come back here and you reset the lift height to whatever you want it to be. So now we can come and walk on it. Oops, and you'll see it goes up and back down. So if you were having issues, uh, hopefully I edited this video in a decent way where you're not too confused. But just try those two things and they should fix it. Um, so yeah, so now we have basically everything other than this moved over to C++. And I'm not going to move this over to C++ because it's pretty straightforward. So timelines don't really even exist in C++. You just would do this in the event tick function. And then you would just, of course, set the actor's location. Uh, there's really nothing special here. If I was doing this for a project, I would definitely just leave this in blueprints because it's really nice and convenient to use a timeline. So yeah, there's really no reason. This is as far as I would ever go uh, when converting to C++. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial. I will probably do more in the future. Please leave a like if you liked it and subscribe. Thank you.